Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hasha Ali Khan. After a long pause, again I have resumed the videos. I'm very much touched with the comments requesting for the subject international finance and financial risk management, FRM, IF and FRM, which is in unit number four of MBA course. So after seeing so many comments, I have taken out some time. Due to hard pressed for time, I couldn't be able to upload those videos on time. Now I have started, I'm going to start the subject international finance. After this, I'll try my level best to complete the subject on FRM, financial risk management also. First of all, about this FRM, financial, uh, sorry, international finance. This is very important subject and little bit complicated subject. You must understand. You must watch the video from beginning till end or watch all the videos. Then only you can get a lot of confidence on this subject and, in, and you can enjoy learning the subject international finance. Right. So before us starting further, take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board. Then I'll explain all the points in detail. Now, in this subject of international finance, we have five units. The first unit, unit is international financial system. This is completely theoretical. Later, afterwards, I'll explain about this first unit, international financial system. Second unit is regarding foreign exchange markets. Now, I have taken up this topic, unit number two, financial uh, foreign exchange market. So, in these videos, I'm going to explain all the contents of this foreign exchange market and we'll do a number of problems on this unit. Then for exchange rate determination and risk management, this is unit number three. Again, we have problems in this unit. Then fourth unit is multinational corporate decisions in global market. How to take decisions in a global financial market. Then international tax environment. This is the fifth unit, last unit. First unit and fifth unit are completely theoretical, whereas problems you will get in the remaining three units, second, third and fourth. So in examination, you may get one theory question and one problem. You have to choose any one of the question. Normally, you can get more marks in attempting the problem, but problems are based on theory. So first understand the concept, then you can proceed. So without wasting the time directly, I'll come to the point. International finance, actually the subject international finance is the subject which is concerned with this, uh, taking the decision for international financial transactions. Nowadays, after globalization from 1990 onwards, the world economies are integrated. Presently, no country can uh, survive itself. It has to depend on other countries also. The world has shrunk into a small market. The transactions are taking place between different countries. So there is a need to exchange the currency from one country, one country currency into another country's currency. So it requires the study of international finance. Now, this second unit foreign exchange market. So in this unit, we are going to study about the meaning of the term foreign exchange market. What is this foreign exchange market? Participant in foreign exchange market. Thirdly, structure of foreign exchange market in India. Then exchange rate mechanism, how the exchange rate will be fixed. And quotes in the spot market and forward market. Broadly, two types of markets are there, spot market and forward market. So what are the different codes that is buying rate and selling rate in spot market and forward market? Triangular arbitrage. I'll explain you about the meaning of the term arbitrage and what is triangular arbitrage. Nominal effective exchange rate, NEER, or real effective exchange rate, REER. These are the concepts. Then currency derivatives. Derivatives are the financial instruments which derives its value from the underlying asset. The different derivatives are forwards, futures, forward rate agreement, options, swaps. All these are called derivatives. Then Foreign Exchange Management Act, FEMA. 
So this is one of the act which regulates the financial foreign exchange transactions. BOP, balance of payment and balance of payment trend in India. Then current account convertibility, capital account convertibility, Tarapur committee report. So these are the topics we have to cover up in this unit number two for an exchange market. One by one will take. Now students require only problems. Remember problems you can understand only when you understand the theory. So theory is the foundation for problems. So don't ignore theory. Have some patience. Take uh, the interest in understanding what I'm explaining. Then we'll go to the problems. Now first of all briefly I'm explaining. I'm not going in depth. Foreign exchange market. Actually market is a place where goods are bought and sold. But presently, due to a lot of technological development, communication development and different I mean, changes have taken place. In that case, the definition of market has also changed. It is not confined to a particular place where goods are bought and sold. But it is the interaction of two persons. Interaction between two persons through any mode. Whenever two persons are interacting with each other, either at the same place or at different places, that interaction is called market. Now, foreign exchange market is a market where foreign currencies are exchanged. When foreign currencies are exchanged, one currency is exchanged to another currency, that market is called foreign exchange market. And simply it is also called forex market. Forex market or foreign exchange market means same. It is not localized. That means it is not located at one particular place. It exists in a network of information system. So foreign exchange market is a network of inf information system where information is, will be passed on from one place to one person to another person and can be called foreign exchange market. So this is the definition of foreign exchange market. Secondly, who are the participants in foreign exchange market? Many participants are there in foreign exchange market. The first participant is the trader. The trader will buy the foreign currency or sell the foreign currency. Simple example I'll give you in case of exports and imports. The importer will purchase the goods from another country and it has to pay the pay the currency of that country. For example, Indian importer has purchased goods from an American firm. So it has to convert Indian rupees into dollars and then make the payment in dollars. Similarly, American firm purchased goods from Indian trader. Then they have to convert uh, dollars into Indian rupees and make the payment. So these uh, traders are the first participants in the foreign exchange market. Second, arbitrators. Arbitrators are the people who want to take the benefit of difference in different markets without taking any risk, no risk at all. So this class of participants seek to earn risk-free profit by taking advantage of different prices in different currencies of different markets. The same rate will not prevail at one market. In one market, the rate is different and the market, the rate is different. So these arbitrage people, what they will do, what they will do, they will see what is the exchange rate in A market, what is the exchange rate in B market. If there is a difference in the exchange rate, they will buy the currency in one market and sell the same currency in another market. So they don't have any uh, risk at all. Buying at lower price in one currency, uh, one country, one market and selling the same at higher price in another market. They are called arbitrators. Now hedgers. Hedging is protecting the business against the fluctuation in foreign exchange rate. For example, an MNC, multinational company, corporation is there. It is exposed to foreign exchange risk because whenever foreign exchange rate fluctuates, it will affect the profit or loss of the company. So they will protect, they will hedge. So Hedgers are the people who want to protect the business by entering into foreign exchange market. Next the speculators. These are the people who will take risk. They will buy the currency in one market, selling the currency in another market. 
that means they want to take the advantage in the difference in the prices at different markets this class of participants actively expose themselves to currency risk by buying and selling currency in forward market to make profit for foreign exchange fluctuation so they will see where it is cheaper and how the rate is going to be in future if they expect that in future the rate is going to increase right now rate is less they will buy it for example if presently the rate is more and in future the rate is going to come down they will sell it right away so speculators will take the advantage from the changes in the foreign exchange rates the next one banks the most important participant in the foreign exchange market are the banks the banks participate in foreign exchange market for various reasons when the banks keep their eye open they are speculating and become speculators some banks are there they will act as speculators they will keep an eye on the changes in the foreign exchange rates by seeing the changes in the foreign exchange rate they will deal in the foreign exchange transactions they will enter into foreign exchange market the banks also appear as hedgers when they hedge their position the banks will make a lot of investment when they make the investment they have to protect the value of the investment and this protection can be done by entering into foreign exchange market since the banks uh, provide foreign exchange service to customer they conduct transactions in foreign exchange market the banks will conduct the foreign exchange transaction on behalf of their clients customers so they will also enter into foreign exchange market next one is government the most important participant in foreign exchange market is government it is the responsibility of the government to maintain the foreign exchange rate so government will also enter in order to stabilize stabilize the foreign exchange rate that's all so these are few participants in the foreign exchange market the important one are traders speculators arbitrators banks and government and speculators all these are the participants now next topic is structure of foreign exchange market in india what is the structure the structure consists of broadly two categories called retail market and wholesale market so who are the participant in retail and wholesale market now we will discuss retail market the transactions are processed through banks and money changes in the form of currency exchanges through bank draft bank notes or travelers checks etc the retail market is a market where banks and money changers will enter into the market in order to settle the transaction for the customer example a customer needs foreign currency he may approach a bank or he may approach a money changer then he will conduct the transactions foreign exchange transactions like uh, currency uh, bank draft or bank note or travelers check like that it's a retail market directly bank and customer or money changer and the customer this is the retail market now wholesale market consists of regional offices and head offices of major commercial banks head office or regional offices of major commercial banks and wholesale market is again classified into two categories that is interbank and central bank this wholesale market is also classified into interbank and central bank the interbank in interbank market banks trade in currency then that means there is a transaction between one bank and another bank or one branch with another branch or head office with the branch so directly they are not dealing with the customer the transaction is between banks to banks right bank transfer deposit from sellers to buyers account that means every buyer or seller will have their account in a particular bank the customer wants to conduct the transaction through bank so one bank makes the transaction with another bank so that will also come under wholesale market so interbank market is subdivided into spot market forward market and derivatives market spot market is a market where the transaction is settled immediately at the spot rate that is called spot market forward market the transaction is settled now 
but it will be completed on a future date. So presently, the two parties enter into an agreement, but the agreement will be completed on a future date. Derivative market is a market where derivatives are traded. The derivative is a financial instrument which derives its value from the underlying asset. Example, futures, options, swaps, all these are called derivatives. So these three are the interbank markets. Last one is central bank. Just now I told you in every country, in most of the country, central bank plays a very important role in foreign exchange market because the responsibility of foreign exchange reserves and maintaining or stabilizing the foreign exchange rate is of the central bank. Central bank has to see that foreign exchange rate is stabilized. It's normal. It should not fluctuate. If it fluctuate, it gives rise to speculation activities. So speculation activity should be minimum. The central bank in most of the countries have been charged with the responsibility of maintaining the external value of the currency of the country. Secondly, the central bank is normally enters the market to smoothen the fluctuations in the foreign exchange rates. Whenever there is a fluctuation in the foreign exchange rate, it is the responsibility of the central bank to stabilize it. That's all. So in this video, I have briefly explained about foreign exchange markets. In the next video, inshallah, the remaining topics and then we will start the problems on this unit. So keep watching. Don't skip the videos. Watch all the videos from beginning till end. Inshallah, we will continue the next topic in the next video.